Hi, Dr. Peterson. Thanks for being with us. Earlier today, we learned from some scientists at the Alzheimer's Association International Conference about subjective cognitive decline. As a leader in Alzheimer's research, and specifically in mild cognitive impairment, can you tell us the difference between subjective cognitive decline and mild cognitive impairment? As the field has evolved, we are becoming more and more aware of the very earliest presentations of what's Alzheimer's disease. And years ago, we described the condition called mild cognitive impairment, which meant that people had a memory impairment beyond what they used to have and beyond what they ought to have, and probably individuals around them were recognizing this. And we've learned now over the years that often that is the earliest stages of symptomatic Alzheimer's disease. Now, with some of the papers that are being presented at the Alzheimer's Association International Conference in Boston, we're now learning about this subjective cognitive decline. This is almost a pre-MCI condition. So at this stage, people are aware that they're not remembering as well as they formerly did, but they're functioning just fine. Their, their performance on memory tests and cognitive tests is normal, and people around them really do not observe any significant change in them. So this is an internal perception that I'm not remembering as well as I formerly did. New research explored the idea of personal memory concerns being an indicator of Alzheimer's disease or mild cognitive impairment in six to eight years after those original concerns were found. Can you talk to us a little bit more about this research? So subjective cognitive concern can be a predictor of what's going to happen in the future. On the other hand, it's very important to emphasize that just because a person has a subjective cognitive concern that they have the earliest stages of Alzheimer's disease. But some of the longitudinal data presented at the meeting have shown that when people have been followed for six and eight years, they in fact do have a higher likelihood of going on to develop mild cognitive impairment or even dementia. Now there are a lot of other factors that come into play, so it doesn't mean that everybody will, but it does imply that people are telling us something that we need to be listening to. How strong is the evidence associated with subjective cognitive decline, and what can we learn from the findings we heard about today? I think it's important now in two respects that subjective cognitive decline is working its way into the literature. One, it's important for people, again, the, the families out there, individuals out there who might be aging and experiencing a little cognitive decline. Doesn't mean you have Alzheimer's disease, but at the same time, don't ignore it. And for the physician population out there, so the doctors, to not dismiss somebody when they come in saying, gee, doc, my memory isn't quite what it used to be. Again, doesn't mean it's Alzheimer's disease, but it does suggest to the physician that he or she needs to ask a few more probing questions. What do you mean by that? Are you talking about your car keys and your reading glasses, or are you talking about forgetting important appointments, things that you formerly would have remembered quite well? So I think it's an awareness issue both to the general public and to physicians. Not everything's Alzheimer's disease, but we might be getting some very early signals that we formerly have not had. What would you recommend for an individual who is worried about Alzheimer's disease or memory changes in themselves or a loved one? Well, if they're really concerned, I, I would discuss it with their own personal physician. Again, not in an alarming fashion, but just make that person aware that I'm concerned about my own memory. The physician then should probably ask a few additional questions, maybe do a little mental status examination in the office to get an idea of how the person's functioning. If there is a suspicion that there is a real genuine memory change, then perhaps looking at some medical issues, it could be your medication, could be some of your other medical conditions you have, could be anxiety, depression, stress, all those kinds of things can cause a subtle change in memory and your perception in memory. But at the same time, it could be the very earliest signal of something more serious. Dr. Peterson, anything else you'd like to add? Well, I think the, the interest in subjective cognitive decline reflects a shift and a movement in the whole field, that we are now trying to determine who might be at risk for developing Alzheimer's disease in the future. So that when, not if, when disease-modifying therapies are developed, the sooner we intervene, the earlier we, in we intervene, the more likely these treatments will be effective. And it may be that subjective cognitive decline is one of these subtle signals that may get us on that road. Thank you for being with us. My pleasure. Thank you.